we already know what isogonal lines are in a triangle with respect to an angle. For example, with respect to this angle in the triangle, this line and this line are isogonal when this angle equals this angle. Or in other words, when the two lines are symmetric with respect to the angle bisector of the angle. Now we're going to define the concept of isogonal points. Suppose we have a point in the plane of this triangle. We can associate this point with a different point in the plane, which we're going to call its isogonal point with respect to this triangle, if the following conditions are satisfied. This line is isogonal to this line, this line here is isogonal to this line, and this line is isogonal to this line. So this angle equals this angle, this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle. Now I'm going to prove that for all points in the plane, there exists a corresponding isogonal point that we can associate with it. So basically, I'm going to take this point to be a random point in the plane. Then I'm going to take this line and I'm going to construct its isogonal here. Then I'm going to take this line and I'm going to construct its isogonal here. I'm going to intersect the two isogonal lines at this point. And then I'm going to prove that this line and this line are actually isogonal, meaning that this angle equals this angle. Let's apply the sine form of Cheva's theorem for this point right here. Then we get sine of gamma minus y, which is this angle, divided by sine of y, times sine of x divided by sine of alpha minus x, times sine of beta minus z1 divided by sine of z1 equals 1, which is given here. Now let's apply the same theorem, but for this point right here. Then we get sine of gamma minus y divided by sine of y times sine of beta minus z2 divided by sine of z2 times sine of x divided by sine of alpha minus x equals 1, which is given here. Now this expression equals 1 and this expression equals 1, and so these two expressions are equal to one another, and when we set them equal to one another, we see that sine of gamma minus y cancels out here, sine of y cancels out here, sine of x cancels out here, and sine of alpha minus x cancels out here. What's left is sine of beta minus z1 over sine of z1 equals sine of beta minus z2 over sine of z2. But we know that this equality leads to cotangent of z1 equals cotangent of z2, which means that z1 equals z2, meaning that this angle equals this angle, and hence this line and this line are isogonal to one another in the triangle. And therefore, this blue point is the isogonal conjugate of this point with respect to the triangle. It's good to know that isogonal points exist, even if the two points are outside of the triangle itself. For example, take this triangle and take this point here outside of the triangle. Then the isogonal conjugate of this point would be this point right here. It is such that this line and this line are isogonal conjugates with respect to this angle of the triangle, meaning that this line and this line are symmetric with respect to the angle bisector of this angle, or in other words, this angle equals this angle. Same thing applies for this line and this line. They're isogonal conjugates with respect to this angle of the triangle, and so this angle equals this angle. And the same thing applies for this line and this line. They're isogonal conjugates with respect to this angle of the triangle, and they are symmetric with respect to the angle bisector right here, and this angle equals this angle. And this is how we define this point, the isogonal conjugate of this point with respect to this triangle. The proof that this point exists is the same as the proof when the two points were internal for the triangle. You just apply the sine form of the Cheva's theorem for this point and then for this point. For example, this would mean that the sine of this whole angle over the sine of this small angle times the sine of this small angle divided by the sine of this whole angle times the sine of this angle divided by the sine of this angle equals 1, and equivalently, the sine of this angle over the sine of this angle times the sine of this angle over the sine of this angle times the sine of this angle over the sine of this angle equals 1. This is the optional problem. We have a triangle, this is its circumcircle, and this here is its circumcenter, so the center of the circle. This point is its orthocenter, so we have that this and this are altitudes in the triangle. We connect this point with this point, and we drop a perpendicular at this point to this line, so this perpendicular. We intersect it with this line here, and then we connect this point, the orthocenter, and this point like that. We need to prove that if this angle is beta, then this angle here is also beta. And here's the solution. The first thing we notice is that the circumcenter of the triangle and the orthocenter of the triangle are isogonal conjugates with respect to the triangle. Indeed, if we have that this angle is beta, then this angle is 90 minus beta, and this angle is 90 minus beta, 
And also this angle is 90 minus beta and this angle is 90 minus beta. And so this angle equals this angle and this line and this line are orthogonal conjugates with respect to this angle of the triangle. And similarly, this line and this line are orthogonal conjugates with respect to this angle and the triangle. Now, let's take this point here lying on this altitude in the triangle such that this angle is 90 minus beta. Then we know that this point and this point are orthogonal conjugates with respect to this triangle. Since we know that this angle equals this angle equals 90 minus beta, and this angle equals this angle equals 90 minus beta. And since the two points are orthogonal conjugates, we know that this angle must equal this angle here. Now let's call this angle x, then this angle here must also be x. And now note that since this angle is 90 degrees here, and if this angle is x, then this angle here must be 90 minus x. And because this angle is 90 degrees, then this angle here must be x. Then Note that this triangle becomes congruent to this triangle, because now they have the same angles, x equals x, and 90 minus beta here equals 90 minus beta here, and they share this side in common. And therefore, this point and this point are symmetric with respect to this line, meaning that this angle here equals this angle here due to the symmetry. But we know that this angle is 90 minus beta and this angle is 90 degrees, therefore this angle is beta. And since this angle equals this angle from the symmetry, we know that this angle here is also beta, which is what we needed to prove.